there, welcome back. So recently I was talking to a friend who just got a new job and he was telling me how he was really struggling to fit into this new culture, company culture. And he said that his, you know, he felt like his ideas weren't being accepted because he wasn't accepted as part of the group. And, you know, he just really felt like he was on an island. And I just really felt the pain in his voice. Have you ever felt like that? I think we all have at some point. Well, imagine you're in a meeting and someone shares an idea that you just think is ridiculous. Would you get up and punch them in the nose? Or what about a friend who demonstrates a small act of kindness at a time when you're just super busy? Would you slap her across the face because the timing's wrong? Of course not, but neuroscience has concluded that the brain processes social rejection the same way it processes physical pain. We all know that rejection hurts, but recent brain scans show that the same areas of the brain become activated and the same neurotransmitters are released when we experience social rejection as when we experience physical pain. In fact, our brains respond so similarly to rejection and physical pain that Tylenol actually reduces the emotional pain that rejection elicits. We also relive and re-experience social pain much more vividly and intensely than physical pain. I mean, you can think about a time when you were in physical pain, but that memory alone won't elicit physical th pain in the present. But when you recall and relive a painful social rejection, you actually flood your brain with all of those same feelings you had at the time, and your brain responds to those memories the same way it did at the time, releasing the same neurotransmitters in the present. That shared brain circuitry for social and physical pain has important implications for learning and overall well-being. See, we're social creatures, and the brain processes any threat to our social connectedness the same way it processes a threat to our physical safety. I mean, we wouldn't tell a child who has a toothache to just ignore it. Uh, we wouldn't tell a coworker who suffers from a herniated disc after falling in the stairwell not to be so sensitive. And we wouldn't tell a friend who breaks a leg just to think about the other leg. And yet, it's often that same kind of advice given to the bullied child or the excluded coworker or the rejected friend by very well-intentioned people. So the next time you feel rejected, understand that the pain you feel is real. Reconnect with people and groups to which you feel a real sense of belonging and acceptance. And the next time you see another person who may be feeling rejected or ostracized, remember, in the brain, it's no different than a punch in the nose. Want to learn more about how the brain works and how to make it work better? Check out my book, Happier Hour with Einstein, Another Round, and the Full Color Companion Gratitude Journal, available now on Amazon.